Do you see the green bar going on? Beautiful. Thank you for singing with us two nice songs like them. Sometimes it's difficult to choose, but I uh, just let the spirit go and make him the pick. And he said there will be advertising between the two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the message uh, did tonight, beloved. I'm excited. Um, first of all, that's the local church. We have months to go through together. I sure hope that you will persevere. Make your notes because it's a great curve of, of learning. It's not necessarily preaching, although we'll get a bit preachy today. It's a lot of information given, given perhaps for the first time in your life. You will be exposed to so many things concerning the universal church that we did and the local church, many messages to come. Last week, I gave you a half page, a lifted up old gun show them concerning the definition of the local church. I'm asking you something, to do just a paragraph. Why don't you keep it in your Bible for a few years and look at it sometimes because it's deductive. You cannot find it in the Bible as such a paragraph. It's deducted from many passages and I would like you to keep, you, to keep it for you. And sometimes we read it if we have the proper focus as to why we attend a local church, specifically for the younger people and so on. Olga gave you this also. Have this ready just to fill the blank. The, the place to fill the blank here are going to be, you're going to lack space unless you write very small. Because tonight we embark into the 13 purposes of the local church and I'm not planning to finish it tonight. We'll take our time and to explain these things. All right. So that's what, how we work it out. Now we get in number two, we have defined last, last week, what is the local church? We defined it into, within that paragraph. And tonight we get into the messages as to why do we come here? Just to, 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 because we have to attend a local church and it pleases God to go and uh, we have a sense of duty being done and you take mark your week, I've been in church this week. Or does it involve something more? Before I say that and carry on, I need on a personal note that in my personal walk with Christ, I've been a believer for the last 25 or 26 years, maybe 27. I think it goes back to 1993. I am refining the joy to come. You will say, Francois, it's easy. You do the speaking. No. no. I wish that somebody else would do it once a month only. Or twice, once, twice a year, I would like to have another speaker here that I may sit down with you. I am rediscovering the joy to come. And let me tell you, I love you guys. Delightful. When I saw your car pulling on the parking lot, Errol, delightful. Uh, 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 it counts for the rest of the people. I'm refining that joy to a point, the only struggle that I have in my life was the local church time. Before we get into the purpose, I have a question for you. Don't need to answer right now. Why do you think we have so many denominations? Hmm. Why do you think we have so many denominations? If you drive the Lougheed Highway in Vancouver, if you drive here on the highway, you go Baptist, Pentecostal, more Baptist, different affiliation, Roman Catholicism, Lutheran Church, Anglicanism, uh, Mormonism, JW, Council of Jehovah's Witness. Why do you think even outside the calls, we have so many de de denominations? When I, that's it. But we will see biblically what's going on here. When I was early in my Christian faith, one of the person involved to bring me to faith, it goes back into 19, uh, what, 1993, the person told me that it was like candies. When you buy candies and we have candies at the table, you make your pick and all of them have a different flavor. Can compare that to ice cream flavors as well. So you have many denominations because it gives you a different flavor of what it is to go to church. I accepted it. 27 years ago. I said, okay. I chewed on it. I chewed on it basically for the last 27 years. And as we grow in sanctification and in more knowledge and maturity, I'm not pretending to be mature, but I think I'm more mature than 27 years ago. With God's faithfulness and the study of his word, 
much more was revealed to me. And the savory flavors of ice cream and candies disappeared quite rapidly. So it was not a very good analogy given to me. It was not tasting like kinds of ice cream flavors or candies. The truth in a nutshell, it's a nice, I like that expression in English, as to why we have so many denominations here, the truth is this, in a nutshell. This is my expertise, basically, from a Jewish perspective. Around the 4th century CE, in the era that we are right now, around the 4th century AD, the larger church itself, they break down from their Jewish origins of the New Testament faith because the oracles of God were given to the Jews in Romans chapter 3, verse 1. So they kind of separated from the Jewish frame of reference of the New Testament, leading to the present state of denominationalism, denominationalism and its theology of confusion. I call it the theology of Babel, confusion. Because they stopped following the Jewish frame of reference, they split apart on the issue of baptism. They split apart of the issue of baptism of the Holy Spirit and so forth. And that is exactly why you have so many ramifications and denomination. It laid the seed for what we call replacement theology. It started to rise in the 5th century. Roman Catholicism in the sense saying that they were the new Jews and so forth. That was a rise of anti-Semitism. It started to teach that the church is Israel, the new Israel, and that pushing the church back in the Old Testament as well. The teaching of no millennial kingdom started there also. They started to allegorize. They went to allegory instead of teaching the scriptures from a literal standpoint. Francois, you will say we're supposed to get into the purposes. Yes. Why do I explain this? It's important to know at least a few of these details without making a dissertation on this tonight for spiritual safety. Almost most of you, if not all of you, wear the seat belt in your car for physical safety. You have kept the rules of the health system by keeping distance for physical safety. But also, we have to embrace or put the seat belt or download the antivirus on the soul concerning the spiritual safety. And that's why here we expand on the local church, and that's why I explain to you kindly, in a nutshell, without getting on the case of anybody, as to why we have so many denominations. Good to know also to understand who we are, not who we are individually necessarily, but to understand here who we are as a local church, a body of Christ. Because now we're adding to it, it's a small body of Christ. It's important to understand this so that you may be, may be able to explain why does he call it independent? He pretends to have the truth by himself and he's independent of everybody? No. It's simply that this local co congregation is not attached to any denominational umbrella. The only umbrella that we are accounted to will be eventually the elders, a plurality of them, and God. Not a head office in Toronto. Not a head office in Vancouver. And to understand also what we do not want to be. To avoid errors. That's all I have to say. So now at least you know a little bit. That was my work of introduction as far as why so many denominations and why we get into the local church and its purposes, Andreas. Why are you coming here tonight and how come I started it on Thursday night by the grace of God and so on? What are we supposed to do? Because we have many purposes, Stephanie, 13 of them. If you are ready, take this. We take about four or five tonight. Okay. The number one, I will be a little bit longer about it because of this. Somebody made it for me. I can't remember the name of the lady. <laughs> She's sitting right there. This one is old. She did that. Uh, Krista did that for me years ago. And there went as well. So because of the sword ministry, so I'm going to spend a little bit more time. On. When is the primary or the number one purpose of the local church? It's to teach, fill the blank now, biblical doctrine. 
And when we say to teach biblical doctrine, it does encompass the totality of this. It's good from Genesis, everywhere in between, straight down to the book of Revelation. Because in this, that's what we call the counsel of God. So everything has to be taught. You cannot leave anything aside, okay, in a sense. So you need to glean your teaching from it. It counts for the 66 books of the scriptures. Do you know where we got that from? Apart from the Council of Yavne and all these terms here, we got that from Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, which I read and you don't remember already because I said it's going to be in the context. Where did we get that from? Daniel chapter 10, verse 21. That's the angel that speaks to Daniel. However, I will tell you what is inscribed in the writing of truth. In the writing of truth here, it's called the book of truth in heaven. There is a book of truth in heaven that is recorded everything that was, everything that is, and everything that there will be. And God has chosen to reveal to you and I, so that much. The book in heaven is complete. It answers all the questions that we don't know. How come this and how come that? It's in the book of heaven. And God has decided from the book of truth in heaven, that's where we have the Bible. That's where it's coming from. So your famous Deuteronomy, if you're quick, go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 29, verse 29, becomes very easy to digest. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Based upon what I said, God has the book in heaven that has everything in it. But he said to Francois, I'm going to give Genesis to Revelation. Even the Jews, they have a different order of Bible. But they have the same amount of books in the Old Testament. And if they write the New Testament in Hebrew, same amount. And Deuteronomy 29, 29 goes like this. By loving Jehovah your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him. No, completely wrong. I was in the wrong chapter. It's not a mistake. It's just to see if you follow. <laughs> I always say the same things. So you should not laugh. Say redundancy here. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. Slash. Why would you like to travel in the place of the dead? That's the secret things that belong to the Lord our God. That's the things that are written in the book of truth in heaven, to which you don't have access at least now. Will you ever? I don't know. But, there is a but here, like the but. But the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever, that we may observe all the words of this law. In the case of Deuteronomy 29, 29, don't ask me, it's direct, directly related to the Mosaic law. But today, it doesn't encompass the whole counsel of God. So it's been given, so it means he says to Francois, Francois, what you don't know, and uh, there is stuff that I don't want you to know, why are you not content, Francois, with what I have disclosed and study it and share it? I think you have enough to have fun with this. So, having explained that, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says to teach doctrine and so on. Acts chapter 2, quickly, I don't, I'm not going to let you time to go because it's too simple. 242, it says this. They were, it, it, what, what is Acts? A historical book. You cannot base a theology based upon a historical book only. It has to be expounded in different places. Book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles and so on. It's a historical book, but it has valuable truth. Listen to that. They were continually devoting themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of the bread. Go to 1126. 1126 of Acts also. 1126 of Acts also says this, 11.26, And when he, have found, he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. This is not necessarily what I want. That's why there is no comments. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught. 
considerable, considerable numbers and disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So when pe preachers speak about this, they always like to say that this is the first place that the people were called Christians. Absolutely good. But this is not my emphasis. My emphasis tonight, it's for one year they taught the counsel of God. Beloved, quickly. January the 1st, 2020, you did not meet at your local church because you were too full with turkey. If I'm wrong, fine. If the shoes are suiting you, just wear them. You st we started your Bible study around January 20th just to let the people slowly coming back from vacation. February has only 15 days. Doesn't matter 28 because they go as fast as it would be 15. And then in 2020, COVID-19 hit. The church did not meet in March, April, May. Will not meet in June because it's summertime. Will not meet in July because it's still summertime. In August, everybody's on vacation. It's still summertime. You will be worn out of summertime. September is still nice. You will still be gathering. You will still be gardening. You will restart your Bible study on October the 1st and start to pack your shoebox for Christmas. You call it a year of Bible study? This unfolding of the church age has dwindled dramatically. Now, of course, I'm sarcastic, Andreas. But it's dancing close to the truth, though. It's dancing close to the truth. So, of course, I'm a bit sarcastic. That aspect, being in the Ladoisian period of church age today, has been dwindled, the aspect of teaching biblical doctrine tremendously and dramatically. I can witness that. The people's attention has changed when you go over 45 minutes of teaching. Uh. <laughs> Do you still love me? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm getting to the fun part. You will be offended, but not too long. You will be offended because what I will do, a gesture, not, not bad, not bad, it, it will offend you. You teach uh, Jan uh, Ezekiel, was it Ezekiel that he was asked 390 days to, to lie and to sleep on the left hand side? And 40 days, that's the life of a prophet, it's fun, eh? 40 days on the right hand side. Maybe I'm wrong with the side, but I, it's Ezekiel. Which of the prophets of DOT was asked to walk a few days with his bums uncovered? Isaiah. Mr. Isaiah. Uh, the, the, the Jeremiah, at the time of Jeremiah, the metro, the subway was slow at that time. They were just beginning it. And he was asked to go and, and, and uh, hide a girdle near the Euphrates. I don't know if you know the mileage between the Euphrates and Jerusalem. And he went physically and hid the, the girdle. It's this garment of the priest, a, a skirt. And he came back to Jerusalem and God said, go back. It's fun to be a prophet. I don't know what the price of gas was at that time. But he must have said, God, I just came back. Can I uh, COVID for three months and go back only after three months? He said, no, you go back and stuff like that. I would like to be a prophet for one moment, just pretending. To book. Harsh. What is John 1 1? You know John 1 1. What is the beginning of the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1? And the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was with God, opening the plurality of the Godhead. And the third sentence is, and the word was God. Psalm fifty seventeen. For you hate discipline 
and you cast my word behind your back. For you hate discipline and you cast my word behind your back. I was not bold enough to do it with the Bible, so it's an empty book notes, but it's read. I'll come back later. I just threw it behind my back. Yan, 1 Kings 14.9. Go. 1 Kings 14.9. It doesn't matter. Yan, nice and loud. First Kings 14.9. But hast done evil above all that were before thee, for thou hast gone and made the other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger, and hast cast me behind thy back. And hast cast me behind thy back. If I'm not mistaken, the word was God. And the word is the Memra concept in Aramaic. If you prefer the Logos, that's the most known. But I prefer the Memra because the Memra is the Americ uh, for Logos. And it's not a Greek concept. It's a synagogue concept. And you have cast me behind your back. And to cast him, you cannot cast the spirit behind your back. But you can cast the word behind your back because God is the word. What you have read from first king here is the most scornful contempt of God. I pick up the book. What's the color? Thank you so much. Only God, beloved, has the right and the authority to cast something Behind his back. Yan, 118 of Isaiah. Nice and loud, brother. 118. Look at this. 118 of Isaiah. 118 of Isaiah. Only God has the right to cast something behind his back. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 17, I will do this one. And that's a gesture that will not offend you like the first time I did it. Listen closely. He speaks to Jeroboam. Lo, for my own welfare, I had great bitterness. It is you, capital Y, who has kept my soul from the pit of nothingness. You have cast all my sins behind your back. That's the gospel, people online. That's only God that has the right to do so. And he will not turn back and go and pick it up. That's the gospel. He has cast your sin behind his back. So how much more should the church have this on the steering wheel? Because in the Hebrew construction, this is a book that has to constantly be before the eyes and the heart. The king has to meditate on it. Not to cast the word, allegorize it, and throw it before, behind your back. So the first reason of the, church, of the um, local church is to teach biblical doctrine. For that reason, his word should be kept in front of us, devotional, and in front of our heart constantly, not thrown behind the back. How can you throw God's word behind the back? Replacement theology, a millennialism, shallow Bible study, and name it. Allegorizing is part of it also. That's the first purpose of the local church, and I wanted to do it physically to show how offensive it could be. 
When we don't teach the word and we leave the word behind, we are simply casting his word behind his back when he cast François's sin in totality. It's not a Walmart salvation that you own. Your salvation is cast in stone forever. You are doomed to the messianic kingdom and the eternal order. It's not being doomed. Because he's not like me. My sins have been cast behind his back and he is not going to turn and pick it up again because it would be simply contrary to his attributes and contrary to his very name and nature. He is a forgiver. It's not a God of being saved ten times. It's not a God of losing a salvation that you don't even have the power to gain and the power to undo. Once you're born in a family, you cannot undo it, a physical family. She has a mom and a dad. I have a mom and a dad that passed away. And I have a blood sister that is looking at, at my little Sophia right now. I cannot undo my sister. You have been placed into the family of God and you don't have the choice. You can by no means can be kick, kick, kicking out of that family. How much more should we strive to embrace that first purpose? We have one behind our back. Don't throw your notes away, please, behind your back. We have one purpose behind our back. Behind our back. Okay, Duke, what's the next one? Exercise pre priesthood. Two, fill the blank, exercise priesthood. I'm going to read only Philippians chapter 4, 17 to 18 on this one. This one I will be way shorter. Philippians chapter 4, 17 to 18 reads as follows. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I have received everything in full, and I have abundance, and I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. He talks about the donation box directly. It's money. He said, I'm not seeking the gift because I'm, I'm already uh, well supplied, but I seek what is falling to your account. And we have studied that together, okay, that you are priest. And that's why I want to start on the same note with this. Stay with me. Terry, would you mind cracking the door open, please? Yeah. Okay, would you mind it half open? All right. Why do you think I don't pass the plate? There is a reason for this. And the reason is based upon what I know. I don't know if what I know is always good, but I think it is if it's from the word. You won't argue with this. We don't pass the plate here. Why? Because I, can I use the pronoun without offending? I don't want the place to go by. Because in large churches, when you, in large churches, you see the aisle and they start to pass the plate and now you start to think. You know, you bring your wallet. And you see a 50, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, 20, damn, fuck, no, thank you. God does not delight in that kind of stuff. We don't pass the plate simply because it has to be taught this way. You are a priesthood here. Hence, I rely on God and his word to work in the hearts of the objects taught, which is you. I thought about it, acting as a priesthood, that you offer sacrifices to God, fragrance, aroma, in support of the people, in support of the community, and your pastors, and so on. I rely on Him to steer your hearts. And it might be only in three months, six months, or some, but some of you did yesterday or the day before, and so on. That's way richer than passing the plate and give out of emotion or obligation. I have a wonderful saying here based on that language from, it's rare that I quote books here, but I have two occasionally, by Gromacki, my favorite guy. Do you know how much I pay for that book? 50 bucks, 40. About the passage, about the passage you just read. What was it? Philippians chapter 4, 17 and 18. Second, I'm going to re read first. It was a sacrifice acceptable. Paul commanded the Macedonians for their welfare collection because they first gave their own self to the Lord. So the first priestly act that they did before writing a check, they gave themselves first. And that's why it was acceptable to God. Gave me you first and then write a check to someone. Wow, I like it. 
uh, what, what, what else? First give their own self to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Before God will accept and bless the financial gift of a believer, he must first present his, holy, uh, present his body as the living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And someone wrote once, no quote, it's probably an, un, an unknown author, two sentence. Not what we give, but what we share. For the gift without the giver is bare. So take your donation back if you have not offered yourself first. Take your money home. Offer yourself first. Okay, I give myself. And then next week, if you come back, put something in there and it will be way more acceptable. That's what we call, in a sense, the extra mile. It's an act voluntary. And that's exactly why here we don't pass the plate. And one word that I will never say that I have a hard time to say in English, and I have that, I, 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 I'm glad that I have a hard time with it because I'm not using it. Tithe. Ten percent. Forget about ten percent. First of all, it's nowhere, nowhere to be seen in the scriptures. Because under the Mosaic law, it was not 10%, it was 22.5 if you calculate all the offerings under the law. We're not under the law here. So there is no such thing as 10%, please. You're a priest, do your job. It could be a day where this man might be in need of receiving. So is in need of receiving. Does he give 10%? No. Is he still in the will of God? Yes. Marilyn, you are a multimillionaire person. And I'm teaching you the scripture of 10%. You have 150 million in your bank account. What's 10% of it? 1 million point five, am I right? So, Marilyn, you need to give 10% of your income. And you put out your pen, 1 million 500,000, but it was not your heart. Your heart was, given, was to give half of it. So donating in the donation box in the back, it's from zero to 100%. That's grace giving. But the people give on the superfluous. Superfluous. Grace giving is from zero to 100%. That's why I talk about the people. I don't know. I opened the cupboard of no one here. And I know that no one will be honest. I, I, I trust you because I know where we live in Vancouver Island. You have food in your fridge? If you don't, you need to talk to the elders of your assembly. We will buy you some. I take for granted that Fred has food. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But what if I'm not right? I'm not, what if I'm wrong? I ought to help you. And I don't want your money today. It's not time for you to give. It's time for you to receive from us. That's the grace of God. And all of a sudden, Fred refined his job and the freezer gets full again and he got a good job. Let him give 75% of his income for one week. And he can flip back to 23.7 the following week. Passing the plate. The third purpose. I'm going to take only three today. It's going to take us forever. It doesn't matter. For corporate, corporate, how do, you, how do you say that in English? Corporate? For corporate pray, uh, prayer. Acts 12.5. Uh, no, Acts 12.5, I think. Uh, no, I think I'm mistaken. Let's do Hebrews. Uh, let's try 431, <laughs> like it says. Let's try it out. Let's see 431, what it says. Yeah, and when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, the place where they, where they had gathered together was shaken. That's the first part that I want. I'm not shy to read the rest of it. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness when they had prayed. And the other one is Hebrews 13, 15. Let me close with that slowly. We pray individually. That's great. All of you are asked to pray individually. Have a time in your day where you bow down a bit, could be driving me to walk. If I go for a walk, I pray a lot. If I close my eyes, my bank account and my emails kick in the prayer time, and I prayed for a major uh, 25 seconds. 
a major one. So it means 26 seconds. Because I cannot pray with my eyes closed. I like to walk. If I walk, I engage into a discussion. It might be completely different for you. Here, corporately, because we need to follow the proper decorum of the church, it's given to one. I would like sometimes to invite a person to come and to pray the, the pastoral prayer. And we agree. We agree together. Do you have any prayer requests? So nobody told me here, now you don't pray for his mom. I know her mom. No, 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 no. There is immorality. Let's pray for this instead. Because we follow the rules that pray for the government and so on. So we come in togetherness and we pray corporately. That's why it's important to gather. We are a temple. And you go to the temple to pray sometimes. You don't have to. Because you are the temple. So Krista in your room, John in your room, you are the temple of the living God. You have your time of prayer. Absolutely great. But also there is the corporate aspect of the prayer that needs to be re respected. And that's why we need it's a command to gather and to be part of a local church. And I repeat, and I'm happy, I'm rediscovering the love. You should see me during the day. My wife is here. Spend the day here, setting up the room, shining my message. She came up with that half pager at the last minute. And I come here an hour in advance at 5.15, 5.20, and here on the parking lot, walking, verifying my PowerPoint, telling the old guy, you need to push the button 13 times to reach the song and the, the, the advertising kicks it anyway. I am excited now like never before. Love you guys and I know I'm loved by you. I'm not saying that to please you. That's the truth. I have nothing to gain out of it. Love my people. And I cannot say my people. I don't know what you he does but I say it anyway. I don't own you. God owns you. But you're my people. Let's take one more. The observance, number four. Observe. Of, delete the of. Observe the ordinances. Scratch the of because we, we didn't want to go on two lines. To observe the ordinances, name them to me. Name them to me, you have to please do. Baptism and breaking of the bread. Oh. We have dealt extensively on that. And look at Acts 2.41 and 42. It's fun. They are described in Acts 2.41 and 42. And they are expounded also in the epistles. So then those who had received his word were baptized. And that they were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of the bread. You have your two ordinances in there. The two ordinances, or some people call them sacraments, we have studied it together, are baptism in the breaking of the bread, the communion in which we will partake between three and four times a year. Number five, we have time. The exercising of spiritual, fill the blank please. Gifts. Yes. Gifts, the gifts plural. Errol, can you read 1 Corinthians 11, 12, and no, don't go in Hebrew. I'm just teasing you. Don't go, don't find it. Don't find it. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 is the lengthier passage on the gifts of the Spirit. We uh -huh. come together. No, no, don't, don't do it, Errol. No, I'm just teasing you. Okay? okay? Because I, we, that's 12, 13, and 14. Chapters. Chapters 12, 13, and 14. Do you know what? Get married tomorrow, and you will receive tons of cards with Corinthians 13 in your card of marriage. It's perfectly outside the context. 100% off. You get married, send them in English, in a good translation, Song of Songs. That is going to help their marriage. They're going to have kids very early. <laughs> Not Corinthians. It's in the context of the gifts. To practice them in love and so forth. Francois, you have a gift to it. Do I have person with a gift of wisdom here? Yes, it's impossible that nobody has wisdom here. You need to practice it. 
Do I have a person with the gift of knowledge? Do I have a person with the gift of exhortation? Do I have a person in that room here, ladies alike, in serving, mercy, ruling, discernment, name them. There are 17 operational. That's why your body need to study it and we will together so that we come corporately. And there is the gift of giving. I forgot this one. Oh, a gift of giving is the one that is not grungy. It's a lot of money. The gift of giving is the one that's signed at the bottom. Path. Tomorrow's tomorrow. There's some people here that has the gift of giving. So give. It's, 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 everybody's asked to give. But there is some people in that with the gift of giving, and they do. A it's not François. I don't have the gift of giving. Do I give? Yes. But I don't do. I think about it twice and pray about it and stuff like that. And my bank account is decreasing. I need you. I need you. Yana has the gift of teaching. This is what he does. You need me, Brandon. I need you too. We stop. Conclusion for today. My conclusion for today, I'm going to come up with something else next week. I pray that all of us may discover the joy, rediscover the joy of coming to a place like this and being part of a local church that follows the scriptures. I'm joyful about it. I am not saying that other churches don't do that. I'm talking about this one here because I don't know exactly what they do in other churches and so on. Freddie, no, not now, Freddie. No, not now. We need to. Uh, yes, yes, now. Freddie, good. I'm going to ask you to do it again, Freddie, in a moment.